Hi everyone, my name is Maggie Rayland and I'm the Professional Development Manager in the Block Career Center and today I'm sitting down with Tess Serpernant, who is the Director of the Block Career Center and the Interim Director of UMKC Career Services to answer all of your questions about salary negotiation. We put out the call to students and we received some really great questions and response to this process and we are happy today to answer those questions. So the first question is, when filling out a job application, what should I put under salary requirements? You know, let's start out with the tough questions, Maggie. Um, <laughs> and and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with my favorite answer for everything. It depends. Um, if it's not a required field, so if there's not that asterisk above it, that I would say don't fill it out. Um, if it is required, I would say do some research ahead of time before you put anything in there and find out what's probably a really good reasonable salary. Go on the high end and then and then add maybe 10% to 5-10% on top of that. Um, it depends. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really yeah, I think it's really important um, to do your research, of course, and to sort of know what the going rate for a position is. So Glassdoor, salary.com, we have a great service on Handshake called Vault, where you can access some salary data from employers. And uh, I think you- Well, and I wanna throw out in there too, sorry to interrupt you, Maggie. Oh. Um, if, you're, if you're a UMKC student, contact us. Right. We probably have really, really good, very accurate, very granular sort of information on salary ranges for different types of positions within different companies that our students typically go into. Absolutely. And I think it's important to your point when you said kind of go 10% over the higher range. You know, if you have really outpriced yourself, but an employer is really interested in your background and your resume, it's likely that human resources department, that recruiter is going to call you and say, this is more what we were thinking for this position. You sort of overshot the mark. Would this be something that you would consider? And generally, it leads to a conversation instead of an immediate no if they're interested. Um, on the opposite side of that, if you really lowball the salary, um, you know, they might go with that number because that's what you've requested and they might have been willing to pay more. But again, it all sort of comes back to your research and uh, knowing what your value is and knowing what the value of that position is. Yeah, and even, even beyond what they might pay you or not pay you going forward, whether they would even legitimately consider you. Um, and bring you in for an interview. Because if you go way high, then they're gonna be, you know, you don't understand what the position is, you're, you've disqualified yourself. If you go way low, they might think, well, wow, you're clearly not ready for this type of position, you're not, you're not the right candidate either. So not only can it affect how much they might offer you, it might actually have a big impact on whether they even consider you. 100%. So here's another kind of hard hitting one, but um, how do I best leverage more than one offer? <sighs> and I think you know, it comes back to it depends. But you, you're asking the tough ones, but the, these are the questions that our students come up with. So uh, this happens a lot actually around the, the peak recruiting season when, you know, people maybe have started uh, first round interview with one company, but but they've already received a, an offer from another company. So if it's something that, you know, sort of a campus recruiting process, so it's um, companies that typically come on campus and recruit and they go to career fairs and that type of position. Um, a lot of times these recruiters are so used to this uh, that students would have multiple offers and, and they'd be interviewing for multiple companies. I would say be, be honest and upfront, um, but to a point. So, you know, you don't, obviously, you'd never want to disclose the salary with a specific company because, you know, that's private information with that one specific company. But you might say, uh, you might call up the, the recruiter that's made the offer 
or is it, yes, the recruiter that made the offer. Um, and just ask for a little bit of extra time. And, and I would say, you know, I just, um, I have an interview scheduled for a company. I really feel responsible for going through with that process, but I'm, but I'm really grateful for the offer. Can I have a little bit of extra time? Um, and, and oftentimes they'll give you that. You might also then call the company that, that has given you the interview, but, you, but not an offer, and, and see if there might be a way to speed up that process and just let them know, you know, this is a huge decision. And, and I really want to make sure that I'm making the right choice with all the information available. Would it be possible to speed up the process so that I can really weigh my options and make the best decision? I think that's great advice. I think it's also important to be really honest through this process. Uh, you know, you don't want to mislead an employer and tell them you have an offer from another company, but you don't actually have an offer from another company because especially in the Kansas City area, you know, it's um, kind of a small town, big city sort of a situation where our recruiters talk to each other, especially our campus recruiters. And if you tell a company that you have this huge $80,000 offer from company A, well, they might you know, call that company and see, or, or call their friend who's another recruiter and check in to kind of talk about you and see what, what the situation is. And if you have misled them, they might pull the offer because you weren't being honest about the situation. So it's also important to just be really honest and direct and upfront during this process too. Right. And never, you know, lie. If you don't have anything pending, never lie and kind of try and get more a better offer by saying, well, I'm interviewing with other companies. Um, that's just inappropriate. Right, absolutely. So our next question is, what can I ask for when negotiating an offer? And I think Tess and I would both agree that there is sort of an order of operations when you are negotiating a an offer and you always wanna start with salary because salary is the most important thing and it's the thing that every raise you will ever earn is based on. So uh, you want to try to get the number up as much as possible initially, but there are lots of things that you can ask for in terms of negotiating an offer. You can ask for different types of benefit increases like PTO. You can ask for professional development for the company to pay for certifications or professional development. There are a number of things that you can ask for, but you always want to start with salary and then kind of go down the list of what's most important to you uh, and if they're giving you everything you want you know it might might sway your conversation a little bit maybe you don't ask for those you know lesser important things because they've already given you so much on the front end or maybe they said no to salary but they are willing to entertain a signing bonus or relocation or something of that nature uh, so I think there's lots of things to ask for but you short, should sort of have a, a process of going down the list and knowing what's most important to you and that number one thing on that list should always be salary yeah, and another one that I think sometimes people forget about is a signing bonus, which is a pretty common thing that, that companies will do this, that just for accepting a position, they'll give you a bonus. And sometimes that bonus might be $500 on the very low end, but it, you know sometimes it's tens of thousands of dollars on the high end, even for somebody directly out of undergraduate or a, a graduate program. Um, so, and, and this is something that sometimes it defrays the cost of moving, sometimes it defrays the cost of having to buy a new wardrobe, um, to a professional wardrobe. Um, sometimes it's, it's just a nice perk, so, so don't forget that one. But relocation oftentimes is a completely separate thing to request, that if you're going to be moving to another city or another state, it can be a pretty significant um, uh, bonus that you would get as part of, of, of your package. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things you just have to ask. I, I personally had jobs where relocation was just part of my benefit package. I didn't have to ask for it. It was just something that was given to me. Um, in other positions, I have had to ask for it and, and maybe they didn't have it or it wasn't an option. And so it was worth having a conversation about. Um, but most of these benefits, you know, some of them just, of course, you think PTO automatically part of your benefits package, but 
sometimes you can ask to come in with more PTO than what they've initially offered you. So it's really about having the question and I would, or posing the question, and I would give one other piece of advice too, is that if you go into negotiations with a company and you have a set salary in mind and these different things that you want to negotiate for, if that company comes back and gives you everything that you ask for, you need to be ready to accept the, the offer. You don't wanna enter negotiations with a company that either A, you never really planned to go work for anyway, or B, um, even if they gave you everything you wanted, you're still unsure because you're pursuing other opportunities. So if you go into negotiations with a company, make sure you really want the position or that you would take the position and that if they do give you everything you want, which happens all the time, um, that you are ready to accept the position. Right. And, and the other thing too is, is be a little bit sensitive. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of negotiating and, and I think everybody should, should negotiate unless very limited situations, but um, you don't have to negotiate for everything. Um, you know, so I would say, obviously negotiate for salary. I would, I would negotiate for trying for a sign, signing bonus, or if there is a specific, you know, a couple extra days of PTO or, um, but, but don't have a laundry list of six things. Because that just, you don't want to be putting a bad taste in their mouth that like, really, <laughs> you know, because most companies, most companies are, going to come up with a pretty good package for you. And so it's tweaking it a little bit, but if you come in with too long a list, then it looks like you know, you're just not happy with that, the whole package, or, or maybe you're not that interested in them. Um, so it, you do need to be a little bit sensitive, I think. Absolutely. So this next question I get all the time, and Tess, I'm sure you get it too, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Um, but what if it's an entry level position and I don't have that much experience? I still think you should negotiate. I really should. do. <laughs> um, oh, look, I have a visitor. <laughs> Sorry about that, people. The joys of working remotely. <laughs> right. um, um, I still think that there's room to negotiate and you probably have more than you think you do. So you might not have a ton of professional work experience, but you're applying probably for an entry level job. So do you bring, do you have a, a particularly high GPA? So, you know, you can prove that, that, you know, you're probably smart enough that you can grasp things quickly, um, that you've got a good, strong work ethic, um, that you can multitask because that high GPA shows a lot more than just, I got A's in my classes. Uh, did you participate in student organizations? Did you have a leadership role? I don't know an organization out there that isn't interested in hiring people that they can see that down the line they could move them into leadership positions. And so, so highlight, you know, based on some of, you know, the leadership role that I had in my, my finance student org club or my, my sorority or fraternity or um, highlight those sort of things. If you've had an internship with that organization, that's a really good feature that you can highlight as, as a reason why you think perhaps you deserve the, the, the slight increase in salary. Uh, so there's almost always something that you can highlight. And you know that they like you. You know that they're interested because they've made an offer. So it's, it's not as if this is completely cold and you're just, you know, you have no experience. So why would they be interested? You know, they're already interested. So 100%. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you said. Um, and then it just goes back to, you know, if you do have multiple offers, taking Tess's advice from earlier about how to leverage those. And, and um, yeah, I think everything you said, Tess, is, is dead on. So how do I ask for more time to decide? And I think you just ask for more time <laughs> to decide. You just, just to what Tess was saying earlier, um, if a company calls you and they say, you know, we would really like a response in three days, but you know that you have an interview coming up or you just need more time to decide because it's a big decision. Uh, you just call that company and you ask for more time. Uh, you know, they may or may not give it to you. 
in our um, experience, companies generally will give you a week, maybe two weeks. Some companies will give you even more depending on their timelines. But um, if a company is being really aggressive, you know, they're saying, you have to let us know in 24 hours. I think that's important to know that maybe that's how that company operates and that's something to consider when you're, you're making a decision is um, if they have a really fast turnaround time and they're being more aggressive, then it's all just good intel for you to kind of help you decide if that company is where you want to be. Um, hopefully they have a good reason for needing a response that quickly, but generally speaking, if you ask for more time, companies are, are generally very reasonable about extending that timeline a little bit. You know, I would say, though, when you're asking for more time, don't necessarily say, I want to ask my parents about it. Um, and you might want to go ask your parents about it. And, and good heavens, even well into my adult and, and quite advanced in my career, I would still run things by my, my parents because they're great business people and, and they had great insight. Um, but, but don't don't necessarily start out with that. Maybe say you want to do some research, you want to look into the benefit package, you, you really want to, you know, make sure that you're fully informed and fully understanding of what the offer is before you make a decision. Um, and maybe, like I said, maybe that involves either coming into career services and talking to us or chatting with your parents or chatting with a mentor. Um, but, um, but I don't know that I would lead with I want to talk to my parents. Yeah. No, I think you can you can say research. Um, just take some more time to consider everything. Always ask for your offers in writing, and sometimes that pushes the the timeline a little bit because they might not be able to get it to you for twenty four hours. There should always be a date on your offer letters that tells you when you need to respond. So make sure that that. Uh, lines up with what the recruiter or the hiring manager is telling you, um, but always make sure that you get your offers in writing so that you can do some research um, and reflect on the entire benefits package uh, so you have it all there in front of you. Okay, this is another one that I think, Tess, we probably get all the time. I know I do. Um, will they rescind my offer if I ask for more money? Probably not. Um, I would say almost. I mean, it, it would have, you'd have to do, you'd have to be rude, I think. Right. Um, it just doesn't happen. They anticipate negotiation. They might come back and say, we can't negotiate. We've made the very best offer that we could. Um, but, th but they're not going to rescind for, for you asking, assuming that you've, you've been polite and, and asked for a reasonable amount. And Honestly, most employers expect you to negotiate. Um, it actually looks really good um, on you as a person if you stand up for yourself and you, you ask for what you want, especially if you're going into a position where you are in sales or operations or where, you, where you'll be negotiating with vendors or, or people on the job. If you just take what you get and you don't negotiate for yourselves, that's somewhat telling um, of what you might be willing to do in the job itself. So I always say ask, and, I, and Tess always says ask, um, but you just have to be kind and courteous and gracious through the process. And, and I have never in my career had a student um, lose an offer just because they asked for more money. Um, you know, sometimes it is a no, um, and sometimes it's a, we'll do a review at six months and then we can reevaluate your salary. I mean, there's lots of things that can, then can come from that conversation, but there is a respect level there, um, that those employers feel when you, you do kind of ask for the money and you ask for the benefits and, and you at least are willing to engage in that conversation. Um, I would, I would agree. <laughs> Sorry, I have people wandering in. <laughs> um. And there goes the cat too. So that's all good. <laughs> um, um, I forgot where we were at, Maggie. I'm sorry. We we're just talking about um, if offers could be rescinded. And, and I was just saying in my career, that's, it's never happened when a, when a person has engaged in that conversation in a respectful way. I, I completely agree. Um, it, just, it just doesn't happen. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are stories out there if somebody asked for something crazy or if they were rude about it, but, yeah. And, and honestly, if it's something where, you know, they come in and they offer you $45,000 and you say, I want 70 and there's just no way that 
they're going to be able to, to meet you even halfway there. Honestly, the conversation is probably going to fall back to you to make that decision. Um, they probably wouldn't even rescind at that point. They would just say, we're so far apart in salary that I don't think we can make that work. If you're willing to reconsider 45 or 50, then we can have that conversation. Um, but we just can't, there's no way we can get that high. And then it would still probably go back to you to make the decision if you want to um, accept or decline the offer. So can I negotiate my internship offer? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, I'd say in general, there's less negotiation with internships. On the other hand, if if you're asking for you know maybe a dollar an hour more, um, maybe. Um, Especially if if you you have received another offer, um, but in general, negotiating internships isn't as big a deal. At least my you you probably deal more with students with internship offers. So. I would say most students don't try to negotiate the internship offers, um, mostly because employers are pretty pretty set in their internship offers. The only time I've really seen it be successful is if you did have multiple offers and they were for really similar positions. So not even, you know, they were in lots of different areas because employers don't necessarily want to play ball if they're being outbid by something that's entirely different. But say you're an accounting student and you have three tax internship offers, all for the you know, same type of work, same timeline, um, but they're all offering something a little bit different. I have absolutely seen in that case students be able to successfully negotiate their internship offers. Generally, it's you know, a little bit more of a signing bonus um, because accounting firms do signing bonuses for internships or it's a little bit, um, you know, a little bit higher hourly wage. It's, again, it's not big swings one way or the other, but, um, you know, to be competitive, they might come up a little bit to, to make sure that they get that student for that internship. Yeah. All right, so our last one, how do I approach my boss for a raise? Be a really good employee from day one mm -hmm. is my best advice for how to approach your boss <laughs> for a raise. Um, because, it, because really you're setting yourself up for that request from the day you start. So, so show up and be a great employee. And, and I think sometimes we think, you know, I'm doing my job, I'm doing the job that they hired me to do. But for an organization, if they're looking at who am I going to promote, who am I going to give a raise to, oftentimes they're not looking at somebody who's just coming in and doing the bare minimum. They're, they want to give that sort of reward to somebody who's really committed and passionate and doing a great job. So I would say, you know, come in and just be one of those people that you're all in. You're excited. You want to learn as much as possible. You want to get involved, um, and 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 just build that reputation is the best way to do it. And then I would say document things. So if you've been working on projects, at the end of every project, ask, ask yourself, what are three things I could have done better? What are three things that I'm really proud of with this project? And and keep that, those notes to yourself and see a process of improvement. When you actually want to sit down and ask your boss, treat it seriously, like schedule a meeting. Like I really want to, to set up a half an hour uh, to talk about my performance and, and um, don't let it be a casual conversation. Don't let it, don't joke around about it. Um, I'd say treat it professionally and and, but make sure that you're a good quality, a uh, good candidate for it. And that's really that being the best possible employee from, from day one. What do you think, Maggie? I agree. I agree completely. I think you have to have uh, the proof to back up your request. I also don't think you have to wait until your annual performance review, although that might, no, no. yeah, it might be the time of the year when they're more willing to listen because they have the budget or, or they're putting aside monies for raises, but you certainly don't have to wait until that point. I would say 
you know, if you're coming off um, a really amazing project that you completed and you have some momentum, that's a great time to do it. I would also say, and you know, this isn't ideal and it's just sort of the way business works, um, you know, in this country, but you know, sometimes you do have to go out and find another job offer to leverage that back to get more money, but it only works if you've done the things that Tess talked about. You can't be a bad employee and then go out and get another job offer and bring it back and try to leverage it because they're going to say best of luck <laughs> and enjoy your new position. Um, but if you feel that you really are deserving of a promotion or a raise um, and you have all of the things that Tess talked about that back up that you're a, you know, an exceptional employee, sometimes the way to seal the deal is to, to go out and, and see and to test your, your worth in the market and to see what other types of positions you could get. And maybe you're looking because you genuinely might want to leave. Um, but then if you're, com but you like your company and if they were able to match it or exceed the offer that you got from another company, you would stay. Um, but sometimes it is, you know, it's important to go out and sort of test your worth as well in the market to see to see what other companies would be willing to pay you either to leave or to to leverage that in your existing company. Yeah, and do understand also, sometimes these things take time. Um, I know I personally, I'm a really big fan of having conversations with everybody that that works as part of my team that, you know, I want to know what their aspirations are. And then we can be working together to, to help get them where they want to be. Um, so so if, you're, if you feel like your boss is receptive to those conversations, just have that conversation about your own career development and professional development and, and use them more as a mentor to see if they can assist. Um, because sometimes if, if your boss doesn't even know what your goals are, they're not necessarily looking for opportunities and they, they might not know that, that maybe they should or even want to be kind of setting you up for what's next. Um, also understand that if you do have the conversation with your boss asking either for a raise or a promotion, very often it is not that individual's choice and decision alone. So they have to kind of run it up the, the chain. Um, and sometimes that takes time. So, so, so don't be frustrated if the response is, I don't know, or we'll have to see. And, and sometimes it takes weeks, months, um, you know, and sometimes years, unfortunately. Um, and and you, you get to decide if what, how much time you're going to, to wait for that sort of thing. But, but also don't, don't hold it too much against your direct manager because it might not be them that's holding you back. Absolutely. I think you can you can feel discouraged and frustrated um, sometimes with your direct supervisor if you feel like it's not happening um, as fast as you like. But I think once you get into business, you're going to realize that there is a whole chain of command um, that oftentimes ends with human resources and their, their payroll people who are doing the, the calculations and the equations to see what what, you know, meets equitable pay for people and um, and so there can be so many layers to that process that uh, you might not realize. So yeah, don't be frustrated or discouraged. Just, I think you have to start with a conversation with your direct supervisor and, and trust and hope that they will, you know, carry your, your torch and, and, and really fight for you to, to get a little bit more money or, or a promotion or whatever it is you're, you're looking for. All right, well, that is all of the questions that uh, you guys submitted to us. And if you have more questions, feel free to submit them either in the comments below this video or to hit us up on Handshake or by email. And we, of course, are always here to answer any questions that you have about any topic that falls under that career umbrella. If there are specific topics that you would like to see entire videos of, um, we are more than happy to, to record them for you and put them on our YouTube channel. But uh, yeah, I will uh, include Handshake links and our website link below uh, in the description. But thank you, Tess, so much for chatting with me today about salary negotiation. And we will talk to you all soon. Thanks, Becky.